Today I'm going to show you how to create somewhat realistic lens flares in Godot 4. The way we're going to do this is by using this shader from godotshaders.com and then ray casting from the player's position to the sun's position to check if the sun is obstructed by anything. I didn't write the shader myself. Also, some of the code isn't my own, but we'll come to that later. This is all part of a found footage camera I'm working on, so if you want more tutorials about that, let me know in the comments. This also isn't really a tutorial, rather I'll show you how to set everything up, but I won't explain every step. So you should have a basic understanding of Godot already. Okay, so let's get started. First of all, copy the shader code from the website and paste it into a new Godot shader. To get the shader to show up on the screen, I'm using the following setup. I've got a control node with a canvas layer as a child. As a child of the canvas layer, there is a color rectangle with the lens flare shader applied. All of the nodes are set to cover the whole screen. Save the scene somewhere in your project and give it an appropriate name. I've called it post processing stack. Now add the scene to your main scene or set it as an auto load. Add a directional light 3D to the scene as well. You need to be able to reference the slide and your player controller from the post processing stack. For that I have a class called level in my project in which I store references to these two objects. Note that if you're using an HDRI or a procedural sky to light your scene, the approach I'm using will not work. But I think you'll only have to change a few lines of code to get it to work. If you run the game now, you'll see that there are some lens flares, but they are not interacting with the environment. To get the lens flares to actually move when a character controller's camera moves, there are two ways. Well, really there's one, but the other one builds on top of the other and adds a few things. Mainly it adds the lens flares fading out when the sunlight is obstructed by an object. So let's start with the easy method. Using this, the lens flares will react to the camera movement and they will show and hide depending on if you are facing the sun. Remember me saying that some of the code isn't my own? Well, for this method there's already some code on the shaders website. So just copy and paste that. It's essentially just getting the direction of the sun and then checking if the camera is facing in that direction or not. For the more advanced method, we'll need to raycast from the player's position to the sun's effective position. Why effective position and not global position, I hear you ask? Well, if we would raycast to the sun's global position, we will not actually raycast to the position of the sun, but rather to the position of the directional light. This is because the only thing that influences the direction of the light is the rotation of the light. But how do we get the effective position of the sun then? You may be able to reuse some of the code from the first method, but let me show you how I've done it. Because although based on the code from the website, I'm doing stuff a little bit different here and there. On the color rectangle containing the lens flare shader, create a new script. Then create a few variables. Effective sun direction with a type of vector3, a boolean called sun blocked, and a variable called adjust time. Set its type to a float and give it an initial value of around 0.15. Next overwrite the process function of the script. In the process function set effective sun direction equal to directional light dot global transform dot basis dot z times maxf camera dot near and 1.0. The directional light and the camera variables should be the references to your camera and sunlight I talked about earlier. Then create two functions. Name one fade in lens flares and one fade out lens flares. Create another one called update lens flares location. In the fade in lens flares function, write the following code var tween of type tween equals to create tween. And then tween dot tween property get material shader parameter slash tint vector 3000 and then pass the adjust time. In the fade out lens flares function we'll have essentially the same code but replace vector 3000 with vector 3, 1.4, 1.2 and 1 or any other values you have eventually tweaked the tint property of the lens flare shader to. Under the update lens flares location function write the following var unprojected sun position of type vector 2 is equal to camera dot unproject position effective sun direction. And then write material.setShaderParameter sun position to unprojected sun position. 
This will make a vector 2 out of the 3D position of the sun. Now let's continue with the code in the process function. Write if sun blocked then fade out lens flares and then return. The sun blocked variable will later be set to true if the sun is blocked by anything. If this is the case we no longer have to go through the entire function because the lens flares won't be visible anyways. So we type return. Next write. If camera dot is position behind effective sun position, fade out lens flares. If visible, fade in lens flares, update lens flares location. This checks if the player is facing the sun and fades in and out the lens flares accordingly. So far so good, but we still haven't actually checked if the sun is intercepted by anything. I decided to do that in my player controller script so that I don't have to reference the player all the time, but feel free to move this code wherever you want. Add a marker 3D to your player controller. Its position will later be used as the origin of the raycast. I've created an onready variable named sun check cast origin to get a reference to the marker. In your player controller add a function called object is intersecting sun. Add the following code in the function. Var space state is equal to get world 3D dot direct space state. Then write the following block of code. Var effective sun position equals to directional light dot global transform dot basis dot z times camera dot far. Effective sun position plus equals camera dot global position. Var ray origin equals sun check cast origin dot global position and var ray end equals effective sun position. Then continue as following. Var parameters of type physics ray query parameter 3D is equal to physics ray query parameter 3D dot create and then pass the ray origin and ray end. Create an array called ray array by typing var ray array and set it equal to space state dot intersect ray and then pass the parameters. Next, we are going to check if the ray cast has collided with anything. If ray array dot has collider, return true. And then at the bottom of the function just type return false. With get world 3D dot direct space state we get the current world the player controller and the sun are in. We are creating a ray cast query here and passing the starting and end point of the cast as parameters. Then we save the data the raycast returns in ray array. If ray array has a property called collider, we return true. If not, we return false. This is because if the raycast isn't colliding with anything, it will just return nothing. Now create a new function and call it check for sun visible. Here add a reference to the sun blocked variable from the post processing stack and add the following code. Sun blocked is equal to object is intersecting sun. Finally, call the check for sun visible function in the process function of your player controller. Thanks for watching. Maybe leave a sub or a like and hopefully see you in the next video where I'll show you how to recreate GTA 5 in 5 minutes in Godot 4.